community. Uh, and welcome everybody who's here in the room, so to speak, and watching on the council's website. Um, just a reminder everybody to keep their mobile phones on silent if they may. As I said, this meeting is being broadcast on our website on the YouTube channel. Uh, and Chair, you're on mute. Sorry about that, I'll start all over again. Uh, good evening, uh, my name is Simon Edwards. I'm the chair of the Morgans of Coombe uh, Planning Subcommittee tonight. And um, uh, welcome everybody who are either in the meeting or watching on the council's website. Everybody, please just remember to keep their mobile phones on silent. And uh, just to say, remind everybody, this is on our YouTube channel. Recording will be available on the channel after the meeting. And could you keep your microphones on mute uh, until you're all asked to speak? And if you could please use the chat function for doing that. Um, we're now in the planning stage of our meeting tonight, and so um, just so anyone listening who's not aware, this is sometimes regarded as quasi judicial. We're uh, performing a regulatory function as uh, uh, laid down by Parliament, and we have, we're constrained in our decisions by current planning policy, national planning policy, regional, and our own kingdom planning policies, as well as all other material planning. In the case of this. Um, and we have to act uh, reasonably with the grounds of planning law and, and all those considerations. And we can't just determine planning applications because of the weight of uh, public opinion. Uh, the um, councillors sitting tonight, uh, we've already introduced ourselves, uh, but just to recap, I won't ask everybody to say hello again. But I'm Councillor Edwards, Simon Edwards from St James Ward, and I've got with me tonight Councillor Wookie, also from St James Ward, uh, from um, uh, Old Malden Ward. We have Councillors Davis and Hughes from Coombe Vale Ward. We have Councillors Bailey and Revalia. Uh, from Beverly Ward, we have Councillors Durham and Heap, and from Coombe Hill Ward, we have Councillors Bass and George. Uh, the officers we have tonight, uh, you've already heard from one, is Councillor, who reminded me I was on mute. Uh, Councillor Nick, uh, Sam Nichols, our Democratic Services Officer. Uh, and we have to present the uh, planning items of two we have tonight, Alex Rosser Trockers, who's a team leader of development management. Now, um, public participation is strictly regulated in relation to planning matters. Uh, and you have to register to speak, and there are strict time limits. Uh, uh, in, in relation to how long you get to speak, uh, and, and which I will um, let you know about when, when you come to speak. Uh, and if you can't join the meeting, we'll read a, uh, a written statement on your behalf if technical matters prevent that. Um, next item on the agenda is any declarations of interest. Uh, do any members of the committee uh, have any uh, declarations? interests, whether of a, a disclosable pecuniary nature or non-pecuniary pecuniary nature, that is to say personal interests, to declare in relation to either any of the items on the agenda tonight. Uh, so if you have, please indicate your name in the chat function now. So no, so we proceed to the next item on the agenda, which is the minutes of our last meeting, which was held on the 16th of December last year. Um, again, um, I would like to be able in some time in the future to sign those as a correct record. Um, and then, so prior to that, can we confirm that they are a correct record of that meeting? Uh, if you don't agree, again, can you please indicate the record in the name? I can't get anything on it. Um, hello? Um, are you, are, I'll, I'll, we'll deal with the item on the minutes uh, first. So um, I'll sign those at a later date. Everybody seems to be agreed they're a correct record. We, as I say, we've got two planning applications um, <clears throat> in relation to this uh, tonight. And the first one is in relation to 13 Neville Avenue in New Morland. Um, some of us will remember that 
uh, this came before us, I think it was in December, um, when um, it, a, uh, an application to build a substantial extension or extensions to the existing house uh, was proposed and approved. This is uh, a separate application uh, for the erection of a single story garden outbuilding in the garden of the property for use as a playroom, gym, and home office. <coughs> uh, I hope everybody's had the, the opportunity not only to read the report and look into the papers on the website, but also to know the late material which was circulated um, this evening. Um, so, having said that, I will call on our um, officer, Alex Wasser Trocas, to present the item. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. If uh, you can just confirm when the first slide is visible, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, Chair, as you correctly <coughs> stated, the first application for consideration this evening relates to number 13 Neville Avenue, New Malden, and that is for the erection of a single storey garden outbuilding for the use as a playroom, gym, stroke, home office. If I begin with giving you some site context, many members will be familiar as this site was presented late last year. The application site here can be seen denoted by the red arrow. Here we have a bird's eye view towards the site here and a aerial view from the rear and the proposal this evening would concern the rear garden where you can see my cursor moving here. Here we have a site location plan, the site bounded in red and as I said the application concerns the erection of an outbuilding to the rear of the site here. For context, here are some site photographs. Here is a view of the front elevation. As you can see, it's a dwelling predominantly finished in red brick and features a number of hipped roofs. And here you have a view of the rear elevation with elements of the previous permission under construction. And here you have a view looking towards the neighbour, number 15, Neville Avenue, where you can see my cursor here. And in the opposite direction towards the neighbour on the other side, number 11, Neville Avenue. Here we have a more recent photograph looking southeast towards Burley Avenue from the rear of the house down the length of the rear garden and the outbuilding would be positioned roughly here behind the play area. Here we have a view from the rear of the site looking west towards Neville Avenue and the outbuilding in that property. And similarly towards number 11 and the outbuilding they have in theirs. Here we have an existing site plan. As you can see, the property is generous and sits on a generous plot with a deep rear garden. And here we have a summary of the proposed development. As previously stated, the outbuilding would be used as a playroom, stroke gym, stroke home office. It would be for occasional use and not for sleeping accommodation. Um, footprint of the building would be roughly 35 square metres and as a real result of the re recent permissions, the total site area developed would be approximately 42%. The dimensions of the building are set out here, so it's roughly 7 metres in width by 5 metres in depth by 3.7 metres in height. And here you have a proposed block plan. You can see outlined in a thicker red line the area where the outbuilding would be sited, oriented slightly on an angle towards number 11. 
and here you can see the proposed site plan with relative separation distances to the rear line of the neighbouring properties. Here you can see it would be approximately 31 metres to the rear of number 11 and approximately 13 metres to the rear of number 15. Here are some proposed site plans and you can see the relative separation distances from the rear boundary approximately 750 mil, about half a metre from the boundary with number 15 and approximately nine metres to that of number 11. As I said, the structure would be oriented slightly on an angle. Um, so at its widest point, it would be separated approximately 1.2 metres from number 15's shared boundary. There would be, just to clarify, no utilities situated within the outbuilding. And here you have some elevations with the height, depth and width set out. You can see in the front elevation facing the rear of the property at number 13, there would be some glazing and the entrance door, there would be no window facing number 15, but where there's a greater separation distance between the neighbour at number 11, there would be a window in the flank wall. Um, in terms of materials, they would be white render and brickwork. The windows and openings would be finished in dark grey, powder coated aluminium, and the flat roof would be finished with a glass reinforced plastic or similar. These materials are considered to be in keeping with the recent extensions considered and permitted by members. Here you have some proposed sections. You can see that the structure would be ever so slightly elevated and that is to ensure the protection of the nearby trees. And finally, Chair, the recommendation is that planning permission should be granted subject to the conditions as set out in the officer's report, agenda papers and update papers, and to delegate to the head of development management any subsequent changes to conditions. If I could just finally finish by um, going over the late material submitted, um, and that involved um, the update to reflect a further objection received since the publication of the agenda. However, that didn't raise any new material issues um, and for clarity um, officers would like to point out that there are no first or second floor balconies approved under the previous application not this one um, and that reference was 20 slash 02037 slash hou i'd also like to draw members attention to the amended plans and documents and they were to reflect the amended or a cultural um, method statement and that amended technical document was submitted to address um, some queries and concerns raised by the council's tree and landscape officer. The officer has subsequently reviewed that technical information along with the updated um, proposed garden room elevations and sections you've seen as part of my presentation and he is happy that they have addressed concerns and ensured the protection and future longevity of trees in proximity to the structure. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much, Alex. Um, we've got uh, speakers registered both in favour and uh, against the uh, application tonight. Um, We'll deal with the speaker registered against. That's uh, Mr. Chris Norville. So, uh, can you, uh, so speak, come to the chair, unmute yourself. Uh, I, uh, Chris Norville, I'm, I'm the one that's apparently described as unknown on the on the list. Well, so. um, I, um, I, 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 um, we, we have met, and so I, I do know you, uh, and um, um, it, so you're you're here to object to the. Um, application and um, if you can address the committee with your comments now and 
you have five minutes in which to do so. And so uh, if you um, uh, can start and you'll, you'll be time from when you start and you'll be reminded when a minute is left to go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chair and members of the committee, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to, to address the committee. Five notica notifications were sent out regarding this application and five objections were received. That must say something about the effect it has on the neighbours. This new application must be seen in the context of the original application for a single story extension, and there, uh, and, uh, which was not built according to plans and no enforcement action was taken. A further application for a triple story extension, uh, including the already illegally built first story extension, was approved by the committee on the 16th of December through a casting vote by the chairman. <coughs> for this approval, Royal Borough Kingston gave concessions on almost every planning policy guideline relevant to the, that extension. I do have to say that the pictures presented by the officer this evening did not include any pictures of the of the extension of the second or third floor and it did and all the plans presented does not include any of the extensions that has already been improved so i cannot understand how that can be can stand now in the approval in december there was a screening fence approved of about 14 feet to protect our privacy and the applicant submitted a non-material amendment uh, proposal to reduce the height of that particular uh, screening which was severely impacted our privacy. Following an objection from us to the council we are relieved to understand that that has now been seen as material and has not been approved but it does reflect the utter disregard the applicants have for their neighbours. The, the latest application is for a garden room of 3.7 to 4.3 meters high. The reason 4.3 is that the 3.7 is measured away from our fence. So the actual height from where we sit is 4.3 meters and it's 7 by 5 meters. It's less than 1 meter from our fence and, and also less than a meter from 18 uh, Burley Avenue. Um, it threatens the TPO willow tree and will lead more to more water ingress into our garden via a proposed French drain. None of the objectors proposed that the applicant not have a garden room. I need to make that clear. All we reasonably asked was that the height be reduced and an unnecessary skyline removed and that proper screening be provided for privacy uh, to protect the, the, the uh, their neighbours from this very intrusive development. In the report, the planning officer agrees that this garden room is taller than standard outbuildings and that the, and the proposed garden building is significantly larger than any other outbuildings in the area. A timber structure smaller in size would surely fit more lightly on the ground, <clears throat> but also protecting the surrounding trees, especially the TPO weeping willow, and it will still provide the applicant with a great garden room. We ask ourselves, why would Royal Borough Kingston, in every application related to this property, allow development well in excess of almost every planning parameter, not enforce clear breaches of planning, and accept plans that are clearly and demonstrably incorrect and pointed out by us, and then recommend them for approval? We are completely at a loss. The situation has now become so extreme that we have been forced to take advice and would be prepared to take this matter to judicial review based on, among others, extreme bias and lack of fairness. In addition, we, we believe that we can invoke the Human Rights, Acts, the Rights Act Protocol 1, Article 1, which protects our right to enjoy our property peacefully. One minute remaining. Um, we would not like to do this, and we trust that you will see this as an untenable situation and support us and our neighbors in this matter to, to require a reduction in the height and size, removal of the skylight and proper screening conditions to be attached to any recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, and um, we now will hear from the applicants at uh, uh, Dr. Baskar, Punukolo and Thivya Sekar, please. 
Hello, good evening. My name is um, Dr. Seiko. Um, good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, and uh, just, just before you start, I'll just remind you, as I have to remind everybody, that you've got five minutes and you'll be warned when you've got one minute left, okay. if you can start. Yeah, thank you. Um, good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak. In putting together our application for a garden room, our architect has carefully ensured that it complies with all relevant local and national planning policies. The planning officer, Thomas Franklin, has set out in his report how our proposal complies with each area of the planning criteria. Our proposed development will not lead to an adverse impact on plants or trees. The area we plan to build in is to the rare corner of our garden is unable to grow plants due to shadowing from the willow tree. Hence, it is a largely unused, barren space as it stands. In regards to protecting the willow and other foliage around the garden, David Archer Tree Consultancy have produced a detailed method statement. We have also hired them to oversee our project from start to finish. The tree officer, Ben Morgan, has indicated he is satisfied with the measures being put in place and he has given his support to our proposal. As the planning officer has stated in his report, our proposed garden room will be at ground level, ground floor level. It will be a significant distance from both of our immediate neighbours' homes and there are numerous mature trees and shrubs along our borders that provide screening. Hence, our proposed development will not have an adverse impact on our adjoining neighbours' enjoyment of the amenities. The officer has confirmed in his report that our garden has more than adequate space to accommodate the proposed development. There are several other houses on our road with similar garden rooms. Both the adjoining neighbours benefit from garden rooms that are adjacent and within close proximity to our boundary. In conclusion, what we propose is a garden room that is similar to that of our neighbours, has no negative impact on trees or on our adjoining owner's privacy, and meets fully with local and national planning policies. We are grateful that the planning and tree officers have agreed this is the case and given their support to our proposal. We are also grateful for your consideration of our proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now there's a, an opportunity for members of the committee to ask questions. Firstly, of uh, the objector. Um, Chris, can you um, again, so to speak, unmute yourself, come back into the meeting, and I will invite. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that Councillor Hughes had, had dropped out of the meeting. Is that the case, Sam? Yes, yeah, he seems to have just left the meeting and now we joined it. Right. Um, he, uh, yeah, he's rejoined. Excellent. We, we have, we, I, we have, as this is a planning matter, those of you who aren't um, familiar with the rules, everybody has to be, all the councillors have to be in the meeting throughout in order to be able to vote at the end. Um, okay. Um, and Councillor Hughes is back. I can see that. And uh, so uh, can anybody who has a question of uh, uh, Mr. Norval, Chris Norval, please um, indicate in the chat function now, and then we will have five minutes for any such questions. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, oh, yes, we have one from Councillor George. Councillor George, please, and we'll start the clock running now. Hello there. Um, yeah, I'm just, um, apologies if, if, if I misunderstood something. I just want to be clear that, you, you, I mean, you're asking for, asking for ideally removal of the skylights. Why, why, would, why would the skylights affect, affect you? Well, in, in your actually, room? from the from our first floor, from the first floor, we can see that, and also from the, the, the neighbours behind, from their first floor, that skylight will be very visible and very clear and would clearly be um, um, uh, sort of uh, the, the, the darker sky and the less the, the, that we have in the area is quite nice. And this one would be very clearly visible from the first floor of uh, almost all of the neighbours. Okay, so it's just the additional heights you're, you're, you're concerned about, really. Yeah, and, 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 and the skylight, because we can see it on the first floor, but then the second uh, point is on the 3.7 metres. Uh, even if you look at an extension, the guideline says that in an extension to a house is 3.1 metres is the recommended height. This is 3.7 metres yeah. 
from the opposite end of uh, the, and measure it from our side is almost 4.3 meters so it towers over the only private space we have left in our back garden basically that's uh, okay thank you uh, thank you very much councillor george uh councillor bass please Yeah, no, thank you, Chair. Now, I was just converting uh, metres into feet because I just find that easier for me to um, visualise on the height. Um, just a question. Um, so you mentioned that you had, um, there was a certain height of your fence, and I just wondered what the height was of your fence on that, that boundary, because um, working out, so the 4.3 metres, that's the height of the... Um, the garden house with the the extra footings that comes to 4.3 meters and which is 14 uh, feet uh, sorry so the fence is probably at that at that side is about 1.8 meters i would guess and the total height would be about 4.3 meters the other question of the fence is the previous application where uh, the fence was 14 foot uh, which was the in, in, in the old language Okay, thanks. Yeah, and no, I was just trying to visualise how much above the fence it was going to be. Thank yeah. you. A lot. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. So that, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bass. Um, do we have any other questions from the objectors? Um, it doesn't look like it, in which case, thank you very much, uh, Chris. Um, and if we can then move to any questions of the applicant. Um, if uh, anybody who has any questions of the applicant, can they indicate in the chat function now, please? That doesn't look like it. Um, in which case, um, uh, uh, what I would ask both the applicant and the objectors to do is to leave the meeting and watch the rest of this on our YouTube channel. Um, again, we ask that simply because it, 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 it helps with the bandwidth and uh, keeping keeping everybody in the meeting, uh, which is, as I said, important in a, in a, a planning context. Thank you, Jamin. Thank you. Um, now, um, uh, I will now ask uh, Alex um, to sweep up um, so that uh, uh, if you could do that, bearing in mind the, the matters raised by the objectors and the applicants and, and any, anything arising from any of the questions that you have heard. Thank you, Chair. Um, there are three items I'd, I'd like to um speak about and the first is to clarify for members that this evening the only aspect under consideration is the outbuilding um, I would just like to distinguish that from some of the comments raised by the objectors um, and the second point is that the the plot as existing and in consideration of the proposed outbuilding remains substantial. Um, the plot coverage with all the additions previously permitted and the outbuilding under consideration this evening would only result in 40% plot coverage. So whilst it is understood that the outbuilding is larger than some others in, in the area, there are outbuildings, it's not uncharacteristic and the plot is considered substantial enough that this wouldn't have any overbearing impact. Furthermore, on amenity, the glazing and openings within the outbuilding would face the rear of the application property, um, not number 15. However, it has been acknowledged that there is a window in the flank elevation, which would be in the direction of number 11. However, that is situated a considerable distance from the boundary, approximately nine metres. Also in terms of amenity, the roof light proposed in the roof would be set flush. It would not be projecting, so is considered to have a limited impact in terms of light spill. Um, and I think 
that sums up the points I'd like to raise. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, the next phase of this um, meeting is questions of the officer. So if um, I can just get my chat function up. Yep. Um, uh, uh, we have some questions of your officer and we start with Councillor George. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm so sorry if I'm getting a bit confused, but I, I'm because there's two things really. Um, it's mentioned in the report about this is you know we shouldn't get too upset about this because it is a one-story building, but it is it does mention that it is a taller than a one a normal one-story building, and it does seem to be raised off the ground somewhat as well. Um, so, so I mean that, that that's a concern, but the overlooking as well is is a concern. And and I was re reading through, and apologies if I've missed something because there, there's we've had quite a bit of late information, and I've been trying to go from one to another. But it it talks about condition five, and I couldn't find condition five to de to deal with overlooking. I wasn't sure what that related to. I'm sure, if I spent a bit more time, perhaps. But I just wonder what if you knew that what that was. If, if I could respond to your first question, Councillor George, um, yes, the outbuilding would be raised off the ground and that is largely to ensure the protection of the trees and the root protection area of those trees. Um, that is an approach that has been supported by the Council's Tree and Landscape Officer. Um, though those risers are essential um, to ensure the health and longevity of, of the trees, particularly the, the willow in closest proximity. Um, and the second question related to condition four, is that right? I, I think Councillor George mentioned condition five, but that, that I think may be a reference to what's in the late material for Traps Lane where you mentioned condition oh, five in relation to windows because there are no <laughs> uh, yeah. it, 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 um, you, I, I have some sympathy with you actually Councillor George <laughs> here because this was very late material uh, and and one does have to assimilate it very quickly um, but there are open. no windows there are no windows of course in the um, flank wall of the outbuilding looking on to uh, 15 Neville uh, sorry, uh, 15 Neville Avenue. There are no windows there. Yeah, the, uh, obviously, the building goes up higher, and so you have you can see the building, but there are no windows in that building. Okay, That's correct. You. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Heath. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of questions for um, the officer. Um, first of all, um, if you could just briefly explain to me what a French drain is. I've heard it bandied about, but in my ignorance, I, I've no idea what it is. And my second question is, um, you just said that the plot, um, the uh, buildings would only cover 40% of the plot. Um, so my question is, what is an average or an acceptable amount of um, kind of percentage for garden to buildings on a plot. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I'm, I'm not a drainage expert, but my understanding of a French drain is it is a drain that is filled with aggregate. So it's a particular type of drainage system. Yeah, so, so, so there's a trench with something like gravel in it so that the water uh, goes into that drain, it doesn't get silted up uh, and then s seeps away naturally into the, uh, the ground around it. Is that it? Exactly. So is that sort of like a large soak away? It, it's similar to a soak away. Um, it's, it's popular in, in residential properties. Um, it's, it's not an unusual drainage feature, I, I can tell you that much. Okay, thank you. And my second question? Um, and in terms of plot coverage, um, it's a case of fact and degree. And on, on application sites such as this, we would take into account um, current plot coverage, um, size of gardens, separation from neighbouring boundaries um, and 
the resultant 40 percent is is considered perfectly acceptable because you still have a considerable garden um, remaining for the application property which um, would remain approximately 310 meters And if yes. I could ask a supplemental question, if it helps on that, um, is that in keeping with the sorts of ratios of uh, building to garden that you find in that area? It, it certainly is. And whilst uh, officers acknowledge that the outbuilding is slightly larger and taller than others, um, it's by no means uncharacteristic. Um, a number of properties on Neville Avenue do have outbuildings um, and, and the plot coverage in this case isn't considered out of keeping um, or in Congress. May I come back with a, a question Ooh. supplementary to that, Chair, please? Yes, go ahead. Yes, um, I noticed in one of the reports that had been done for the applicant, um, it showed uh, a very nice um, garden room, whatever you want to call it, uh, number nine Neville Avenue with a kind of twisty path down to it. Now, from that picture, it looked as though it had proportionately larger garden and it was more in keeping. It had a fairly large garden room to it um, in comparison with this one, which seems to be perhaps a little bit squashed because of the size of the outbuilding. That's more of a comment than anything, but I just wanted to raise that. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 as you say, Councillor Heap, I think that's more of a comment than a question. I, um, and I, I'm told that Councillor Hughes um, indicated he wished to ask a question after Councillor George, but I missed that um, because I, I, he, raised, he used the raised hands function, but Unfortunately, my tablet doesn't allow me to see raised hands. So, um, however, uh, Councillor Hughes. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I lower that hand. It may have been done by error. <laughs> OK, then. Uh, in that case, I'll, I'll, I'll move on to Councillor Durham, then. Uh, to be honest, Chair, that, that, that my question has been answered. I was, I was talking about sort of the size of it. It does seem uh like quite a, a large size out garden indeed it's actually the size of my old flat in london um so uh, <laughs> but uh, that's not unusual um it, 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 but so basically what you're saying is that that isn't out of keeping in the area are the are the outbuildings directly in the two neighbors uh buildings are they are they they are a bit smaller or about the about the same size <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor. Um, certainly the two adjoining neighbours, number 11 and 15, have smaller outbuildings, but Councillor Heap did point out another neighbouring property that does have a substantial outbuilding a little further along the road. So it's, it's by no means um, an anomaly to have an outbuilding of, of this size. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, what... Uh, um, I mean, I, I, people can ask questions um, as they make comments or, and vice versa. But what I'm going to do now is to formally move the motion that planning permission be granted subject to the conditions and any subsequent changes to the conditions delegated to the head of development management um, as recommended in the report. Um, and can I have a, a, a seconder for that uh, formally, please? Yes, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Heat. Um, uh, it, the next stage then is a, a debate. We obviously people have made comments as they make questions, and then, as I say, if any questions of the officer arise during the debate period, then you know um, we'll have them answered too. But if anybody wants to make any more general comments or uh, before we move to the vote, please indicate in the chat function now. Councillor Wookie. I, I was worried about the height. 3.7 metres is actually very tall. Why do they need 3.7 metres height for a games room? Even if you take the bit off the bottom, that gives them a very tall room. Are they thinking of playing basketball in there or something? Um, 
I do find the height of the building um, a little higher than it needs to be. Um, most buildings are not that tall. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Wookie. Councillor Bailey? Councillor Bailey. Yeah, sorry, it's just unmuting. Um, uh, I'd just be interested to hear a little bit more about um, having no utilities in, a, in this quite substantial building. I mean, uh, what do they mean? I presume there will be some electricity. Um, is it just that there won't be any water there so that someone can't live there? Because it is big enough, obviously, to accommodate someone. So um, how do you stop someone using it for resi residential when it's a brick belt thing rather than just a garden shed? Uh, well, and um, certainly go back to your officer on that one which is a, a bit of a bugbear, as we know. Thank you, Chair. Um, I should clarify that by utilities, I meant that there was no bathroom proposed, no no toilet or ensuite. Um, there would ordinarily be electricity for the room to be used as a, a feasible office or playroom, um, but it, it hasn't got any kitchen or bathroom proposed. So it would be very difficult for um, it to be used in its current state as any unit of accommodation and it certainly couldn't be used for more than occasional use due to the landlocked nature of the site um, it would also be very difficult for it to be used as a, a separate unit of accommodation in any other form um, because access is, is through the main property um, solely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, anybody else want to uh, make any comments um, before we move to the vote? No, in that case, Sam, I'll ask you to uh, do the roll call on the resolution that's been moved that planning permission be granted subject to the conditions, etc. Thank, th thank you, Chair. Um, so please indicate how you wish to vote by saying for, or against or abstain. And please, can you also confirm that you've been present for the duration of this item? Councillor Bailey. Um, for. Thank you. Councillor Bass. Um, abstain, and I've been here for the whole meeting. Councillor Bailey, can you confirm that also? Yes, I've been here throughout the meeting. Thank you. Um, Councillor Davis. I'm against, and I've been here for the whole meeting. Councillor Dorrance. Uh, four, and I've been here for the whole meeting. Councillor Edwards. Uh, I've been here for the whole meeting and I'm going to abstain. Councillor George. Yeah, I've been here all along and uh, I'm against, thanks. Councillor Heap. I've been here for the whole of the meeting and I'm going to abstain. Councillor Hughes. Uh, with an extremely small exception of about 20 seconds, I've been here for the whole meeting. I'll take guidance from the chair on that, whether I can vote or not. Um, I, I believe those 20 seconds were accounted for and we paused whilst you were away. So, Mr Chairman, I, ca I can vote in your opinion? Yes. Okay. In which case, I vote against. Uh, Councillor Ravalia. I've been here for the meeting and I will be abstaining. Councillor Wookie. I've been here for the whole meeting and I'll be abstaining. So, Chair, to confirm that is two in favour, three against, and five abstentions. Um, so, thank you very much. In that, in that case, we need to move uh, with reasons. Uh, we'll sort out the reasons first and then move the motion uh, um, for uh, uh, the uh, rejection of this application. Uh, so we need first uh, uh, to outline the reasons for rejecting it um, and perhaps those councillors who voted against could indicate the planning reasons. 
that they have uh, for rejecting this application. Um, um, Sam, could you remind us who, who they were? I think it was Councillor Davis, Councillor Hughes, and... And Councillor George. And Councillor George, thank you. Sorry, so we need... if it helps, um, the, the reasons I'm prepared to have put it forward as a, a reason for refusal are actually laid out on the paper at page uh, A5, which is the impact on the natural appearance of the area, the impact of the amenities of neighbouring occupiers and, and the impact on trees. So don't accept what I've heard this evening from the officers. Yes, and, and that's very general, if, if I may say so. Could you be a bit more specific? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the exact policies in front of me. I wasn't really expecting this to be refused. I expected more people to vote for it rather than abstain, which doesn't seem to be the right pl the place to be in. But um, I don't believe it meets policy D three of the London plan. I don't. I mean, you know, where, where do you want me to stop? Um, oh, if, if Councillor could... Edwards, if I may interject, would it assist if if I gave some some guidance on this? That would be yes, helpful. Please. I mean, it's in effect the three reasons that were given in this as planning considerations. I don't believe they've been met. If if I could turn to the topic of trees in the first um, instance, I think it would be very difficult to form a robust reason for refusal, given our in-house technical expert, our arboricultural um, officer, has supported the scheme and the technical advice submitted um, on behalf of the applicant, I don't feel that um, we could substantiate um, a, a robust reason for refusal that would meet the tests set out in, in national policy. In terms of character and appearance, it would be necessary to articulate how that would be harmful. Um, and similarly, in terms of neighbouring impact on amenity, um, the specific ways that the community would be adversely impacted would have to be specified so it would have to be in terms of um, loss of light loss of privacy um, overbearing members would have to be very specific as to what their reasons were if that assists thank you chair yeah i mean i think, I think the reality is that the 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 issue of the um, skylight in the roof, I think, is a loss of amenity of the of the neighbouring occupiers. The excessive height of the building, which is out of keeping with the area, um, I think it's those those aspects which I'd, I would concentrate on. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Um, um, Councillor George or Councillor Hughes, do you have anything to add to that? Um, not really. I mean. Uh, to, to, to my mind, it was just too tall, um, and and that you know we were told it was it's above a normal one-story height, and. and that, you know the, the way that it is protecting the trees has made it even higher from, from where that from where it's being placed. Um, so so it's the same. So, so for me, it's the high, and, and and I do think it is overbearing, I, and I think it's overbearing mm -hmm. because it's at a different part. You know, you, you expect to be loomed over by a building um, that is next to you or close to to your house, um, but if you've got a garden, then I, I do think different rules apply. In that something that is that can be you know much lower can still be quite overbearing, and I think in this case. Um, you know, this is, well, this is too I, I, tall I, and overbearing. Overbearing too high. I think those, those are the points then. Um, and I, I don't think it's probably worth bearing in mind, as I think um, right in saying that under the permitted development order for a, an outbuilding of this design within a metre of a boundary, I think it makes some high people high um, but, um, so I, 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 can, I, can I just, sorry, can I just add, as, I mean, Although we've been told that there are similar places around, um, I, I'm not convinced that there are similar, as similar to, to this, um, 
for this not to be sort of rather out of keeping as well with, with the area. I mean, you know, I think once you start raising things up um, and having taller buildings and having them in, in specific locations, then, then I think it is out of keeping with the, with the area. Thank you very much. Um, um, Alex, is that sufficient for our purposes? Thank you, Chair. Concentrating um, principally on site, I think. Um, I, I think that the members have um, adequately articulated a reason for refusal in terms of impact on neighbouring amenity, but in terms of the fallback position that you mentioned, Chair, of the applicants having rights under permitted development to erect a outbuilding would mean that the um, point about it being out of keeping wouldn't be as robust given the presence of outbuildings in rear gardens on the same street, one of which at least is of an equal size to what is being considered this evening. So I think we do have one robust reason for refusal in terms of the um, height of the proposed bound, uh, outbuilding is considered to be overbearing and therefore would have an unacceptable adverse impact on the neighbouring properties. But I do think we need to specify which properties um, specifically you believe the outbuilding to be overbearing on. I think, I think that's probably um, the uh, number 15, isn't it? But Chairman, given given that yeah, yeah, this is absolutely right, this is I was a little surprised when I saw this was coming to committee that you could have done this under permitted development. I'm assuming that the majority of the reason why it's but here not that high. is on not the that point as well. But it's also not it's also some distance away from the boundary would be for it. I think it's two meters or one meter, is it, from the boundary? One, this one is, or two, I can't remember. I did look I, it up this afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> this, I believe is about ten centimeters or something from the boundary. At it, one it point. Is, it is. It is so, quite close. Yes. So my view is that where it's beyond, where it's closer than the permitted amount from the boundary is what is the homes of which is overbearing. It's a simple okay. yeah. So it just to clarify, um, Councillor Edwards's point: it's um, within two meters of the boundary um, under permitted development. The applicant would be able to erect an outbuilding which would be uh, two point five meters in height. So given your point, Councillor Davis, I think the only property that we could um, state this had an overbearing impact on would be number 15 because of its distance from the boundary shared with number 11. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and um, we have Councillor Wookie who um, has indicated that you want to speak. Oh, it was just that, um, you know, I have one of these outbuildings in my next door neighbour's garden. Um, and it was, it, they built it too tall. I complained to the council who had it reduced. It is half an inch from my border. But because it only goes about uh, a foot, to use imperial measurement, above my fence, I find that, you know, reasonably acceptable. I just, I just am having a problem with the um, 3.7 metres. Yeah, well, I think we, we, we have that now as the principal reason. Councillor George, thank you very much. Councillor Wookie? Just, just a quick one, really. It, um, it, it was, I, I previously mentioned about out of keeping, and I was told that because there's, you know, other places nearby. I, I don't think that this is, I, I, I'm not convinced that there's lots of um, these sorts of buildings around of the similar height, of the similar design, uh, modern design, uh, block design. Um, that you know, I, I'm not aware of, of, of them being being so many around. I do think it's out of keeping. It might be in keeping with the the house that's quite a long way from it, um, but it, in the area, I think this is out of keeping. But that's my 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 opinion. Okay, thank you. So um, I, I need someone to propose. Um, that this be refused and a second please well, i'm happy to propose it if councillor Ian george is prepared to second it yep thank you and can we therefore go to a roll call on that uh, of the motion being to refuse the application thank you chair um so please can you indicate how you wish to vote by saying for against or abstain councillor bailey 
abstain. Councillor Bass. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Dorrant. Against. Councillor Edwards. Uh, abstain. Councillor George. Four. Councillor Heap. Abstain. Councillor Hughes. Four. Councillor Ravalia. Abstain. Councillor Wookie. Abstain. So, Chair, to confirm, that's four in favour, one against, and five abstentions. Thank you. Um, so, that resolution is passed, and therefore the application is refused uh, on the basis that has previously been discussed. Um, so, thank you very much for that. We move on now to the second item on the committee, uh, which is the Willows. Um, so, um, Alex, can you present that? Thank you, Chair. Could you confirm that you have cited the first slide? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Um, the second application for consideration this evening relates to the Willows Traps Lane, and that is for the demolition of the existing detached dwelling house and the construction of a replacement detached dwelling house with basement and new outbuilding within the garden. Here we have an aerial photograph showing the site. It is a substantial plot with a long rear garden that backs onto the Coombe Golf Club to the rear. Here you can see an area which is a filled swimming pool, which demonstrates the, the sheer size of, of the plot. Here you have a view from the front here we have Traps Lane running at right angles. And here we have an aerial view from the rear. This is the site boundary outlined in red. And here we have some photos of the existing situation. This is the front elevation. As you can see, there is a substantial mature street tree in existence and the site is separated from its boundaries in closest proximate in closest proximity currently uh, to this property here and here we have a view of the rear elevation largely comprising brick with a later conservatory addition and here you have a closer view of the rear garden and a view looking north towards number 13 Badger's Walk. And here we have an existing site plan that shows the relative separation distance between number 13 Badger's Walk and the rear of the existing property. Here we have a slide of the existing elevations, which shows from the streets the relative heights of the properties. So to the left, 11.7 metres, and to the right, fairways at 8.6, the current property falls between the two at 7.8 metres. And here you have a site section again showing the separation distance between the property on Badger's Walk and a street scene elevation. Here is a summary of the proposed development. And as you can see, it's for a large property, a large family sized property, five bedrooms, which would accommodate 10 persons. Um, it would have a generous internal um, accommodation area it would have a generous garden measuring approximately 1,100 metres square and would provide a total of three off-street car parking spaces, one of which would be located within the basement. This is a proposed block plan 
which shows that the new dwelling would conform and respect the front building lines of the neighbouring properties on Traps Lane. You can see the greatest projection would be here to the north. It's also important for members to um, consider that the application includes the erection of two structures in the rear garden, the largest of which is here where my cursor is, and that relates to a sunroom and this smaller structure to a shed. The proposed site plan shows that there is a reduction in the separation distance between the nearest most rear projection and neighbouring properties to the rear. However, that would exceed the separation distances recommended in local guidance. Here you can see in a closer view the relative separation distances between the boundaries and that would be 1.2 metres on the northern side and 1.5 and metres on the southern side. And this is a close up of the structures to the rear. The largest outbuilding, as I said, um, has been termed a sunroom and the smaller a, a storage shed. Again, both structures separated from the boundaries by over a metre. Here we have the proposed ground and basement floors and to the left you can see the basement plan which shows the car parking and cycle parking accommodation. It would also house um, a gym stroke cinema room, plant, laundry and a designated gym. This could be, ex could be accessed through the house as well as independently from the rear garden. And on the ground floor, you have the living accommodation, kitchen, dining, living areas. And as we move up through the floors, we have the bedroom and bathroom accommodation on the first floor and a master bedroom and larger bedroom, bathroom, dressing room on the second. The roof plan, a close up here, shows that as part of the proposals, solar PV panels would also be proposed. And here is a shot of the front elevation. This plan again shows the relative um, height between Mitchley to the north and fairways to the south. The proposed dwelling would be a maximum of 8.85 metres in height and would be a distinctly contemporary design. It would have flat roof forms um, which are stepped away from fairways and incorporate elements of living roof at the top level. Here we have a plan of the rear elevation as you can see, the contemporary design follows from the front to the back and has large expanses of glazing of ground and slightly narrower and shorter stories as we go up into the first and second floor levels. Here is the northern elevation with fewer windows than the front and back and they are largely high level narrow windows. And this is the south elevation, which has a slightly different treatment and, and squarer windows. This is a close up plan of the outbuilding and the summer house, as it's been called, and the nearby shed. In comparison to the previous application under consideration this evening, this has utilities in the form of a separate bathroom changing room sauna room and associated plant. And here we have the outbuilding elevations which range between 3.1 and 3.5 metres in height um, and have the majority of the glazing on the elevation facing the rear of the application site. Here we have a site section which more clearly shows the basement accommodation 
and here we have a proposed street scene again showing the relative heights between the neighbouring properties, the front boundary treatment, the retention of the large street tree and the terraced formation and flat roof forms. And here we have a proposed CGI of the front elevation and that um, essentially illustrates the proposed materials which would largely comprise red brick. Um, there are elements of till timber cladding and concrete. Um, as I said previously, it is a distinctly contemporary design, taking design cues in terms of its materiality from neighbouring properties. Um, to the north, as you can see, there's also the use of similar red brick. Um, and here we can see the front boundary and associated gates. So finally, Chair, the recommendation this evening is that planning permission should be granted subject to the conditions as set out in the officer's report, agenda papers and update papers, and to delegate to the head of development management any subsequent changes to conditions. Again, if I could alert members to the submission of late material, and that largely responded to um, questions and requests from respondents in terms of hydrological survey conditions, um, treatment of windows, um, treatment of boundaries, issues of the hedges and neighbouring trees and the suggestion of two additional conditions which related to landscaping and um, further details on the site boundaries. Thank you Chair. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, again, we have um, registered speakers, uh, and again, we'll deal firstly with the uh, objectors, who are Daniel Cassidy and Patrick Dunn. Um, you have five minutes between you to speak, uh, and again, uh, you'll be uh, time from when the first of you to speak starts, and um, you'll be given uh, a one minute walk. So, to speak, uh, as well. so if, um, I, I, uh, I, I guess so you've already decided who's going to speak first. We, we have, thank you very much. Um, so, um, If you can start uh, when you feel comfortable, and you'll be time from then. And, and you're, you're Mr Cassidy? No, I'm Mr Dunn. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry That's quite you. all right. That's okay. Go, so, go ahead, please. Thank you. So first of all, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I'm Patrick Dunn, as we've just established, and I'm here to represent the views of all three adjacent neighbours to the Willows. That's Fairways, Mitchley and 13 Badges Walk, as well as Rose Cottage, which is just over the other side from the Willows. We very strongly object to this proposal. Our objections are set out in our submissions and the additional information that we've provided. They relate to the excessive height and bulk of the buildings, the, the impact on character uh, and appearance in the street scene privacy, loss of light, the impact on our foundations, drainage, wildlife and habitat loss, and the enormous building in the garden. It's a very long list, but I will just focus on three aspects. Firstly, the excessive height and bulk of the buildings. Apart from the impact on the street scene, we are very concerned by the potential impact to our foundations, arising firstly from the depth of foundations required for such a big building and basement, this and the tree felling proposed creates further risk to the foundations, particularly of Midgley and Badger's Walk, and on drainage for all of us. Secondly, privacy and loss of light. The proposal affects all of us, but Midgley the most. The early's objection is clear. The combination of the height and bulk of the building, plus the extension room located on the Midgley side so close, would significantly reduce privacy and light for them both on the upstairs and ground floors. Thirdly, drainage. As set out in the Fairways letter of 18th of March, we have serious concerns about the impact of such a substantial property on surface and groundwater flows and the potential for flooding around our properties. The plans also suggest that significant amounts of groundwater will need to be pumped away from the basement. The sewers and drainage are already a significant issue in this part of Traps Lane and Coombe Road, as you will be very well aware. 
additional pressures will be placed by this proposal on the sewers. The eyes on drainage and uh, sorry, the eyes on drainage and sewers report commissioned by the developer states that there are significant blockages in their stormwater drains and sewers. It states that their section of the foul water drain, SW1, has lost 80% of its cross-sectional area. According to the inspection standard, this suggests that these pipes are at risk of collapse at any time and at a high risk of backing up or causing flooding. We are very surprised that the council would lay itself open to the legal risk of approving this application, knowing the high probability of exacerbating an already very fragile drainage situation and the potential impact on neighbouring properties foundations. So we implore you not to approve this foundation. In the unfortunate event that you do, we would strongly request that it is conditional upon the following, that the height of the building be reduced in keeping with fairways, that a full hydrological survey is conducted at the developer's expense and all known and potential drainage problems are rectified to avoid a potentially catastrophic situation. As you know, there has already been flooding in this area. Planning officers should check sight lines to ensure that neighbours are not overlooked and for the impact on light. And they should do this from our properties, not from out with, with the willows. The windows to the sides of the building should be frosted and unable to look out uh, into the lounge and dining room of Mitchley. The windows, uh, sorry, the extension room proposed on the Mitchley side, we would suggest if you unfortunately do approve this, being placed on the fairway side of the property to reduce the very significant loss of light for Mitchley. You should not allow the outbuilding or at least reduce its scale. Uh, you did so with the, the one before and that was lower. Um, and that it, you should place a condition that it should not be used as business premises or living accommodation. With regard to the trees on the border of the willows with minute Mitchley, remaining. 13, thank you, and 13 badges walk, including those with nesting tawny owls, these should be kept for screening and wildlife protection. Not to do so when there are nesting owls would go against the council's policy of no net loss for biodiversity and be a failure to operate under your biodiversity duty. Even with this condition, there would still remain a significant loss for biodiversity on the site. So you should assist on a PEA uh, assessment focusing on birds of conservation concern, again, at the developer's expense. Uh, 13 Badges Walk would, however, be uh, be fine with trimming the trees to two metres along the edge of their back garden. There should be no taking down of the rear fence running along Mitchley as it's Mitchley's as per their deeds. The trees on fairways Mitchley and 13 Badges Walk side should be protected from building work, as was done with the golf course, which you approved. So thank you for listening to us. And again, we implore you not to approve this application, which we consider to be a strategic application because you will change the character I'm of Traps sure. Lane as a result. Uh, thank you very much. Um, now, if I can invite David Challoner to speak on behalf of the applicants. And again, five minutes with a one minute warning. Hello, can everybody hear me? <clears throat> Yes. Thank you, members of the committee, for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I just wanted to highlight that the application is not a developer. They are a family who are local to the area and have outgrown their existing house. They, they would like to stay local to the area with the aim of building and moving into a more eco-friendly home. The, the existing property is small, unattractive and outdated with small windows, which make it dark and gloomy inside. The applicant wants to move away from this form of outdated property and create a more modern, light and spacious family home. They seek to obtain planning permission to build a house which is relative to the size of the plot, which exceeds the nationally described space standards and is of high quality. The design has been carefully thought through using a 3D BIM CAD system, which considers natural light, health and well-being, practicality and improved connection with the large rear garden. The house will include a heat recovery and ventilation system. This will help to improve the energy performance of the building and provide cleaner air into the dwelling. The materials of the proposed dwelling have been carefully selected so that the colours and tones will blend with and complement the colours and tones of the area. The planning officer describes the materials proposed as being of sufficient high quality in their report and feels that they would respond well to their surroundings. 
The use of natural materials will also help the house to connect with garden and landscaped areas. We seek to set a new standard for eco-friendly design, which will exceed the current building regulations requirements. The eco-friendly nature of the design will help to achieve a 90% improvement of the building regulation standards, which has been requested by the council. The proposal will include a secure cycle store and electric car charging point for more eco-friendly modes of transport. The rear garden has been designed to provide functionality, amenity space, an open green space in the centre, and a new tree has been proposed to comply with the tree officer's requirements. A sustainable urban drainage system is proposed, which has been produced by a drainage engineer. The green roof finish will provide biodiversity and also act as the first stage of cleaning for the sub system. During rainy periods, it will also help to regulate water flow and permeable paving will also be used on the patio areas to help to minimize water runoff. The planning officer's report states that the officers are satisfied with the proposal and not result in any material adverse impacts on the amenities of the neighboring occupiers by way of overbearing appearance loss of light, loss of privacy, or any other environmental harm. This scheme has not been worked, this scheme has been worked through thoroughly, and we have worked with other professionals who have produced all of the relevant information to meet with the requirements so that it complies with planning, planning policy. This includes a structural engineering report, drainage proposal, and landscaping scheme in order to help the applicant achieve what is to be their dream home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I invite Alex to sweep up, please? Chair, yeah. um, I, I believe there's um, a section for questions. Oh, sorry, yes, I've forgotten. Um, I've um, forgotten uh, questions uh, to the objectors and the uh, applicants. Thank you very much, Sam. So um, anybody with questions of the objectors, please indicate in the chat function. Thank you. Councillor Bass. Thank you, Chair. I wasn't sure whether Ian was first, but that might have been for a previous thing. Um, for a previous one, yes. Yeah. Quite a while ago as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Just a couple of questions. Um, I was I, I was wondering if um, you could be able to explain where the... Do you, have you worked out where the ground floor finishes against your side windows? Because I noticed you have like your bathroom side windows um, adjoining to the property. I don't know whether you you kind of looked at where that ground floor wall would go, because obviously the ground floor is quite a bit higher than normal. And then my other question was, if you could just give me a few more details, because you mentioned about owls in the um, in the fence, and I know that you're probably um, quite clued up on that. Thank you. Yes, so uh, it's actually my wife that's very clued up on uh, on that, obviously as a, a member of a number of local bird or, or organisations. Um, so with regard to the, the windows at Fairways, um, I think there will be a loss of light to our bathroom windows. Those are both frosted bathroom windows on the upper level because of the, the overall height and bulk of that. But I think the impact on light is actually much more severe for, for Mitchley than, than fairways, which we've been been clear about. Uh, as to the as to the owls, um, their nesting, um, you know, lots of people enjoy the sound of the, the owls uh, and, and, and children and other people sort of looking at them. Um, and they would be, you know, they would lose their their sight. And that's particularly important uh, and, until the period until September where they're where they're nesting. My wife is here and she can answer any supplementary question on the owls, but you know, there may well be a save the owls campaign if the proposal goes ahead. They're, 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 a, they're an amber listed bird and they, the, the, the fledgings won't be out of those trees until probably the end of August, September. You wouldn't normally be cutting down any hedges or trees with a wildlife impact between the beginning of March and the end of September. So if you approve the plan, the least you could do is not chop those trees down while the owls have got youngsters in there. There's a pair of them in there nesting. Um, you've got all these environmentally friendly things in your building, all the materials, presumably keeping trees for an owl's nest. 
yeah. would be very high up on the applicant's list of priorities. But but you actually shouldn't take them down at all because you know you lose the lose the owls for forever. But you'll do most damage if you if you do anything about that bef before September. But we don't think you should take the trees down at all. Um, thank you very much. Any other questions of the objectors? I did have another question, but I was going to give <laughs> someone else an opportunity. But if there's no one else, I could ask there, another there, question. There is time, I think. Yes, because I, I, know, I know that you're talking on behalf of Badger's Walk, which goes behind, and we saw it. So thanks, because obviously we went on a site visit this week. Um, and, and Mitchley, yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's the other side, not your side, but it's the other side mm. that's more affected <clears throat> by loss of sun mm. um, because it's north-facing at the back. Um, if you could just explain the loss of, presumably there's going to be some loss of sun, is there? From the from the outbuilding because that's just on their patio really isn't it? Uh, well, I think there's two, there's there's the ex, what looks like an extension to the house, and that will cause material loss of light for um, for for Mitchley. The outbuilding, which is going to be at the bottom of the garden, I don't think it's a a light issue for Mitchley, but it is for Badger's Walk because that will remaining. obviously be well over their garden. If yeah, no, thank clear. you. That yeah. was sorry, I didn't explain it very well. That that was the, was the outbuilding, and Badger's yeah. Walk was the one that I was talking about. Well, yeah. it will be. You know, they've got a lovely garden view at the moment, which will be, you know, ruined by that. Thank you. No more questions. Thank you. Um, I um, in, in the absence of any other questions of the objector, we'll move on to questions of the applicant. Um, can you put your name in the chat function if you have any questions of the applicant, please? Um, I, I have one, if we're just waiting. It's about the outbuilding at the back. Um, I just wanted to check on its dimensions and how far away it is from the <coughs> boundary with um, um, the... Uh, uh, with uh, Badger's Walk, um, from the sections, it, it looks as though the height is 3.31. Is that correct? Okay, at the front it's um, 3.1, at the back it's 3.5. So the average is about 3.3. It's to do with the ground level, because obviously the ground level. Uh, and how, 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 how far away from the boundary with um, Badger's Walk, is it? Can you remind us of that, please? The side wall is 1.3 metres away. Thank you. Um, Councillor Dunn. Thank you, Chair. Um, I um, wanted to find out how high the front wall uh, was, and, it's, and it seems to have sort of gate and so on and so forth. It seems out of keeping with the immediate area, having looked around it yesterday. Um, I know there's, there's, there's walls further up, but uh, yeah, I, I, it just feels a little out of keeping. So I just wonder how, how tall that, that front wall will be. <clears throat> well, from the street level, it'll be 1.57 metres. It's quite high. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councillor uh, Bailey. Yeah, could you explain a little bit about the basement development? How, um, if there'll be any natural light in that, and also about the underground car parking part of it, and, and how necessary that is, really, g given the um, concerns about the hydrogeology around that area. Yeah. So the just bear with me. So the basement consists of a, a plant room, a laundry room, a gym, which has a, a door to the rear, which has a window. It's a, it will be a glazed door. So that will provide natural light into that area and also act as a means of escape, a secondary means of escape. And also a games room stroke cinema room, which is next to the garage. And 
the garage is for parking for both uh, cycle stands and a car. My client has a car which he, he uh, needs to keep garaged. Yeah, it is. It, it, um, sorry, if I can just come back, Chair. It just seems um, very large basement. Um, well, questions really at the moment you'll you'll have an off um, we've only got a limited amount of time okay um, my question was really was does it is there are there similar basement developments in in the area do you know happen to know that I, i'm not sure that um the, the he may be able to answer that i'm not sure it's necessarily a, a material planning commission uh, consideration but um are there any other questions of the uh, applicant um it, it may be that the officer will be able to answer your question better uh, councillor bailey thank you uh no it doesn't look like it and i imagine we're about out of time anyway um thus we do move now to the sweep up by the planning officer alex can you do that please for me Thank you, Chair. Um, there were a number of issues raised. Um, I have made, made a note of most of them, but if, uh, if any members would like to come back um, for clarification, please do let me know. Um, in terms of character and appearance, um, the officer's report fully acknowledges the contemporary nature of the proposal, um, but it is considered to be of extremely high quality with good sustainability credentials um, and does use materiality and design cues from neighbouring buildings, despite its contemporary appearance. Um, its height falls between um, Mitchley and Fairways, whilst it is slightly higher than the existing family dwelling on the site, it is by no means excessive. Um, and still falls between the heights of those two neighbouring properties. Um, a number of comments were made about drainage um, and foundations. The foundations themselves would be considered under a separate regime under building control regulations and aren't um, material to this planning application, but um, the applicant has provided a, a a substantial amount of drainage and uh, technical information to provide comfort that this application wouldn't have an adverse impact on, on the groundwater within the site or the immediate surrounding area. In terms of trees, um, our in-house technical expert um, has supported the findings of the submitted information um, and I do note that concerns have been raised about protected species that haven't been covered in the uh, preliminary ecological assessment that has been submitted uh, by the applicant, but they would be protected under legislation and um, as the officer report states that should any protected species be found as a result of the development, they would be obliged to comply with that legislation outside of the planning remit notwithstanding that the recommendations of um, the bat mitigation study um, require that a bat license or similar is obtained prior to the demolition of the property so all the known species all the known protected species in the immediate surrounding area have been protected as far as possible through the technical information provided and the conditions that require strict accordance with those um, recommendations. Um, in terms of loss of light, um, again, a technical study was supported, uh, submitted to support the application, and that has found that no habitable room windows will suffer um, an unacceptable loss of light. It is acknowledged that there will be some loss of light to the neighbouring properties previously mentioned, um, Mitchley, uh, fairways and uh, Badger's Walk, but to emphasise they would not be an unacceptable loss to habitable room windows and therefore are considered acceptable. Um, and in terms of boundary treatment, um, there is a condition suggested as part of the late material which 
asks for further details on the boundary treatment, not just in relation to the front boundary treatment that fronts Traps Lane, but to ensure that appropriate boundary treatment is acted on all sides of the site. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much, um, Alex. If I can um, ask uh, those who are members of the public if they could now leave the meeting, um, the, um, they are, you can follow it on the YouTube channel. We need the bandwidth to make sure everybody remains connected. Um, and I um, have uh, questions of the officer as the next stage. Um, and it is uh, Councillor Davis with the first question. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wonder if the officer can help me with uh, with an issue, because uh, obviously with a lot of these contemporary buildings, they do use a lot of flat roofs, and um, there's the temptation to put skylights. And I noticed that there is a light well which is going down through the house into the hall area with a skylight on the upper floor. And I, and I suppose just to check, because so, obviously the house next door is substantially taller than this particular house, and there isn't any risk of overlooking through that skylight into what's going on down in the hall. It was that protected by the location of windows in the next door house. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Davis, could you confirm whether it's the skylights that you see adjacent to the balcony on the second floor plan or the skylight that you see in relation to the first floor plan that is above the um, the living area? Well, I suppose it's both, but the one that particularly concerned me, I mean, the one above the living area would obviously be an issue because it's at a lower level, but there's a skylight which goes through a light well down at the stairwell at the front of the building. So I think that's the second story or third, if you take the basement out, or fourth row, isn't it? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm clear on the skylight you're referring to now, and because it has the, um, the balcony area, if you like, that relates to the master bedroom on the second floor, that would be obscured by the um, balustrades associated with that, um, and it would be a sufficient distance away from the habitable room windows in the southern flank wall of Mitchley so as not to cause an unacceptable impact. And the living area one, as you, as you raised it, is a similar issue. It, is, it obviously doesn't have an overlooking from Midgley either. No, not from any habitable room windows. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bass. Yeah, no, thank you, Chair. Um, just a, a couple of questions to the officer. Um, Alex, thanks for taking us on the site visit the other day. Um, the one, um, the one question I, there was one question I asked you on site, and and it was about the the elevation, the height of that ground, well not ground, well yeah, the ground floor, not the basement, the ground floor. Um, so the height of that bear next to the windows next door because as we were looking at it we were trying to visualize where it came to but from what we could work out the actual height of the ground floor was actually above those first floor windows in in the house next door thank you chair um it, it the ground floor wouldn't encroach on the level of the windows that you're referring to in the northern elevation of fairways um, and in addition to that the windows in that northern elevation of fairways at first floor level are related to bathrooms a non-habitable room um, when you're considering loss of daylight sunlight and in addition to that they are obscure glazed Oh, so to confirm, the height of that um, first floor roof will be below the level of the windows? No, sorry, the, the ground floor would. The first floor would be um, above, but would be separated by some distance from those windows in the northern elevation. Okay. 
Um, and I just wanted to ask about the owls because obviously they're they're legally protected. Um, I was just trying to under, um, understand why do we have to wait um, for the buildings to discover them? Because surely if they're nesting owls there, someone could just go and have a look and just see where they are and then we'd, we'd know for sure they were there and that they had to be protected. Thank you. Yes, um, as I stated earlier, a preliminary ecological assessment was um, conducted um, and subsequently updated um, in, in 2020 as part of those studies. No evidence of owls has been found, um, despite the comments from um, objectors this evening. Therefore, we, we cannot reasonably attach any condition or make any further um, requests for technical information um, from the applicant. However, the findings of the um, technical information require that prior to demolition, um, a protected species license is obtained. And therefore, as part of that process, if anything comes to light, the applicant will be obliged under legislation to um, consider any findings of protected species, whether they're currently known about or not. Thank you. That's the full answer. And one more question, if I may. Yeah. Is that right, Chair? Um, yeah. So um, coming on to the outbuildings, because obviously we, we've, we've discussed outbuildings at some length tonight. Um, so the, the outbuilding, I think, is 3.7 metres high. Um, can you just clarify what what distance it is from the um, from the boundary? I mean, it's probably in there somewhere, but we've got quite a lot of um, documents, including the late ones. Just to clarify, please. So, in terms of the um, separation distance from the southern boundary of um, number 13 badgers walk which is is the nearest property it would be 1.3 meters from the boundary on that side and just for clarification the the height of the outbuilding nearest that shared boundary would range from 3.1 to 3.5 meters in height with an average of approximately 3.3 so it's not quite as tall okay thank you Thank you very much. That was my recollection of the answer we got as well. Um, any more questions of the officer? No, in that case, um, I will um, formally move the uh, motion. There's one more uh, question. Oh, so there is, yes. A, a late entry from uh, uh, Councillor George. Thank you. But apologies. Um, yeah, it's, it's really just to get a, a few comments from the officer, a, a few more comments from the officer. Yeah, so, yeah um, go for it. I just want to sort of give my thinking over and, and then you, uh, I'd be grateful for some feedback, really. I, I think my, my main concern is the, to the, I think the north side, at Mitchley. Um, although the actual total height of the building isn't this isn't as high as the one next door i think it's very different in that um, there's no pitched roof um and, and onto that it, it's just one big sort of flat wall um and it's to me it's quite a, overbearing and, a, a, and may feel quite oppressive and, and and you know right up against um sort of windows that you really wouldn't expect that high to have a, a sort of wall right outside I mean that, that that does seem out of keeping, and, and I suppose that's got to do with the design of the building. I mean, I'm not particularly in favour of that design of building, but that's neither here nor there. However, when you look at the picture of the building and and that sort of flat design, when you combine it with the front wall, it does look very very um, oppressive and, and and totally out of keeping. Now, I understand that they are allowed to have a brick front wall, um, you know, so we can't do much about that. But when, when it, if we, if we take the design of that building with that brick wall, it, it doesn't look like any other building anywhere near, nearby. Um, so so to, to me, 
the, 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 there's a problem with with that design and the wall. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure the officer can answer that because that's all comment, I think, unless the officer has got anything particular she wants to say. Well, I, um, I, 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 I'm thinking, you know, I don't want to get, go down a rabbit hole and then you come back later. I, I think it's out of peeping. <laughs> And, yes, and, yes, you know, yes. and, and, and is overbearing and, and oppressive. If, yeah. if I could just make one clarification point, and that is in relation to boundaries. Um, as I said, we have got an additional suggested condition um, for all boundaries of the site, including the front boundary, which would uh, back on to or, or face Traps Lane. Um, the, the, the boundary wall that you saw in the CGI would have to not only satisfy um, officers in terms of character and appearance, but in terms of its height for um, visibility displays and highway safety purposes. So we would secure further details to ensure compliance on those points. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much. Councillor Bailey, a question for the officer. Yeah, it was to do with the underground uh, parking and the uh, parking spaces. It's, I think it's you said it is one over the the limit of parking spaces. Um, I think it said in the paper. I'm just wondering about the this underground parking space and how common um, underground developments are along along Traps Lane like this. It does seem to be very large. Uh, sorry, that's a comment. But. Well, that's a, a question as well. So, Alex? Um, in terms of car parking, uh, yes, the officer acknowledges it is in excess of the uh, newly published London plan standards. However, the existing situation on site would provide for um, a similar amount of car parking. And, and given the existing situation, it would be unreasonable to um, impose any any different standards um obviously it's the applicant's choice whether they um would like secure car parking at a basement level um i know it's not common in the Moldens and coombe neighborhood for basement accommodation but it isn't unusual we have had other proposals for basement accommodation um in in the recent past thank you chair thank you very much um and just uh um, I think it's probably time for me to move the formally move the motion uh, that planning permission be granted, subject to the conditions that any subsequent changes be delegated to the head of development management. Uh, can I have a formal seconder for that motion, please? Seconded, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Heath. And we move now to the debate. And obviously, as people have been asking questions, they. Uh, um, joined in the debate and uh councillor durham thank you chair um i um for once agree with councillor george on the, on the wall uh situation i think it is quite out of character uh, having looked at the uh area it's one point basically 1.6 meters does seem to be very um very high uh that's what but that's unfortunately where i uh i, I now differ from councillor george and i think that the contemporary design is is, is okay um uh, in, in in that respect that's that's down to them but uh uh that was a concern and i wrote some other things i thought that the height is okay because it's kind of stepped up from fairway so uh it doesn't uh, create too much of a problem there um, I was sympathetic to the um, the hydrological survey, um, which which uh, came from the objector, and I think that that needs some investigating as well. Um, I, I am also made a note about outbuilding because obviously we have just described uh, and, uh, and not allowed an outbuilding with uh, three point seven meters. So it was good that there was some clarification. This is not 3.7 meters. If it was, we'd have had to think, think about it again. And then finally, my, my final point was on uh, the owls. I think that needs more investigation. Uh, they are a protected species, so we do need to make sure that is uh, is looked into. So those are my comments. Thank you. Um, Councillor Wookie. 
Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's the outbuilding again. I just don't see why they need one quite that big, quite that close to the to uh, the Badger's Way one. It. I quite like the house. I don't like the front wall. I just find that outbuilding ridiculously large and out of keeping with you know Badger's whatever it is. Um, Councillor Bass. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, and I, I agree with um, Councillor Durrant about the hydrological survey. I mean, I hear, uh, I mean, I read what the officer's written in reply, but I do know from a lot of houses in Coombe Hill where they've gone ahead and been built that people have kind of suffered a lot of, a lot of flooding problems afterwards. So, it and. And given the points that have been raised at the meeting, I think we really need a belt and braces on this. Um, I don't actually mind the style of the house. I quite like modern contemporary styles. Um, but I think the, the trouble is, is yes, it's a large plot, but then they're trying to put a very, very big house on it. And, um, you know, I agree with Councillor George that one sheer long wall um, right by Mitchley which is the property that is going to be affected by the sun because it's north facing at the back and that's the way the sun will go around. So they will obviously lose a lot of light. So, I mean, I just think it's overbearing really, scale and dominance. Um, and I do think these owls need to be really looked into because um, um, the objectors seem to know what they were talking about on this. And, um, you know, no reason to make up owls. So I think we really need to absolutely make sure that um, that we cover the biodiversity. It's a big thing um, for, for any council. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Davis. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I think I um, agree with a lot of what's been said. I certainly agree with Councillor Durrant, actually, um, which is I don't have a problem with the architecture at all. And in fact, you know, we've committed other schemes on Traps Lane of a recent time, which were different than from the railing narrative around that area and in fact i don't think traps lane necessarily has got a cohesive look to it it's a, it does vary quite considerably as you drive up or down it yeah, um, i noticed that we do have um a condition around the wall and the subtle rather we've got a, an, an added a condition on the late material around the boundary treatments um and i would support that we make sure that officers are aware that what we're after with within that sense because Actually, one of the things I think I would agree here, and I hope Councillor Darwin will agree, is actually part of my problem with the wall is if we're going to if we're going to permit um, a startlingly different house, it'd be nice to see it rather than hide it behind a wall. And I'm sure the architect would support me in that as well. So I, I think any treatment that does happen on that 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 boundary ought to be a bit more um, not transparent, but it needs to be have a bit more ability to see through it a bit less of a, a sort of coherent dominance over the actual public realm on, on our side of the boundary um we don't have a condition around uh owls and i don't know how we'd put one in to be honest with you because i'm not sure how because that would become an amendment and i'm not allowed to move an amendment unless we vote down the application so i don't quite understand how, how we're supposed to cover that off but it's certainly something i think should be covered off but as I say, I don't know that we're allowed to move an amendment, Chairman. Um, well, I'll come back to owls, if I may, um, when I have a, a few words and I might I'll go back to the officer on that one. Yeah. If that's it. Is that it, Councillor Davis? Yeah. OK. Um, yeah. So if I may uh, myself join in, so to speak, um, um, as regards the front boundary treatment, the additional uh, condition, um, it is uh, seems to me to possibly cover that, especially if the officer is aware of the feelings of the committee uh, as regards the rather, uh, what's the word for it, um, austere uh, 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 nature of the uh, current CGI. And it, it might be much nicer if it were broken up in some way so that there would be some way of seeing through the uh, boundary treatment to what is, to my mind, a, a really nice design. Um, I, I, I don't think that the house is too big. It's, an, it's a very, very large plot. Uh, and um, I 
of the way in which the northern flank wall um, it aligns with the southern flank wall of the of Mitchley seems to me to be acceptable and that, that their their light is not uh, lost to a, an unacceptable degree. As regards the outbuilding, again, we've got to bear in mind that it is a very large plot. Um, it's on completely flat ground, so we don't have the uh, problem that we were faced with in Neville uh, Gardens with falling ground so that the building is higher looked at from the neighbouring property than it is from the property itself. And of course, it's further away um, um, in one and a half metres uh, as opposed to you know, absolutely bang right up on the boundary. Uh, and, and so I'm not concerned about that either. Uh, so I, I do, however, want to go back to the officer about owls and see if there is anything that, oh, sorry, I should have men mentioned hy hydrogeology. Um, and the amount of detail we have on from the structural engineer and on drainage um, is atypical in my experience, it's more, more than we would normally get. Uh, and it seems to me that that fully justifies the officer's conclusion that um, hydrogeology -geo is something which has been properly covered and talked about. Um, so owls, please, Alex. Um, is, is there something we can do in the way of a condition? Which, um, because uh, you mentioned there's no evidence of owls, but we have heard clear evidence, as it seems to me, from the objectors of the presence of owls in the in the boundary trees, uh, and um, it, it seems that that, that that could possibly be a, a matter of, uh, that the committee could uh, require uh, some form of condition about. Could, could you help us on that? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm by no means disputing um, the, the comments made by the objectors this evening, but we, we don't have any out, uh, evidence to substantiate um, the presence of owls. However, we could um, with the agreement of the applicant, attach a pre-commencement condition to any approval which asked for um, a preliminary ecological assessment update um, with specific regard to bird species in order that we have the latest evidence. Um, we, we do consider that we have robust evidence, which doesn't include the presence of owls, but um, it is possible that we could um, go back to the applicant and um, request that via condition. And, and what, was the, what was the date uh, of the assessment? Um, do you have that to hand, Alex? Yes, yeah, so um, the initial um, BAT survey was conducted at the end of 2019 and then we had a further update um, in 2020, I believe. Um, so it is possible that in, in the last few months there has been a change of circumstances in terms of biodiversity, but we, we certainly don't have any evidence to that effect. So um, it would be... A it would have to be a pre-commencement condition and, and you, you correctly point out, of course, that that would have to have the consent of the applicants. Yes. Um, we, can't, we, we can't impose it without their consent, but subject to that consent, we could ask for that condition. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Um, well, I, I um, um, be guided by my uh, Democratic Services Officer as to whether I have to move that formally as an amendment. Do I have to do that, uh, Sam? When we do when we deal with these chair in in development control committee, um, the chair normally um, would add these on um, if 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 the the whole committee was minded to add it on. So I mean, obviously yeah. the, we we could take a vote on it, but if if, if there was a, a need, only if there was a need to do that. Um, well, can I then ask um, is is there anybody on the committee who wants us to take a vote on the additional condition concerning? Uh, a further ecological study, if it, essentially to look for owls, subject, I, I, I would have to say, uh, to the applicants accepting that condition because uh, it would be a, it's a pre-commencement pre commit condition which requires their consent. Uh, does anybody want to have a vote on that or, or can we just 
add that and then move to the vote generally. It looks like we could add that. Ch Chairman, um, I know we can't challenge that, but it, it, I mean, I, maybe that's the best we can do, but that does seem rather weak, doesn't it? Um, well, it, it, my advice is that it is, it is the best that we can do. Um, Um, if if anybody has any better ideas, then let let uh, then um, I, I'm willing to hear them and discuss them with the officer. But that's the position that we're in at the moment. Anyway, um, with that um, extra condition, I um, would ask us to have a roll call vote. Vote, please, unless there's anybody else who wants to say anything at this stage. Sam, can you take the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, so I will now call each councillor in turn. Please, can you indicate how you wish to vote by saying for, or against, or abstain? And please, can you also confirm that you've been present for the duration of this item? Councillor Bailey. Um, I'm against. Councillor yep. Bass. Against, and I've been here the whole meeting. Apologies, Councillor Bailey. But... Uh, sorry, yes, I've been here for the whole meeting. Councillor Davis. For being here the whole meeting. Councillor Durrant. Four, I've been here for the whole meeting. Councillor Edwards. I'm in favour and I've been in here for the whole meeting. Councillor George. Yeah, I've been here throughout, against. Thanks. Councillor Heap. Um, abstain. Councillor Hughes. I've been here throughout and against. Councillor Ravalia. I've been here throughout and for. Councillor Wookie. I've been here throughout and four. So to confirm, Chair, that's five in favour, four against, and one abstention. And thank you. And Councillor Heap, I think you need to confirm you were here throughout the meeting. Sorry, I confirm I was here throughout the meeting. Thank you very much. Well, in that case, the uh, application subject to that minor amendment is um, approved. Um, thank you very much for your uh, care and attention on that uh, um, uh, application. Um, there are no urgent matters that, that I authorise and I therefore conclude this meeting at 21 minutes past uh, 10 this evening and it only remains for me to thank everybody who's attended for their contributions, uh, particularly the officers for their very helpful uh, contributions throughout tonight's proceedings and thank you and good night. Night all.